Okay, what's going on boys? Uh, this is the fourth time I'm recording this. So, sorry if I lack enthusiasm or if I go too fast, I just can't. So, what you want to get for this uh, shit is uh, you want to download the WBK. I'll put the link in the description, just download this. This is so you can develop drivers. Next thing is um, you want to get the actual uh, patch guard bypass, patch guard blocks the loading in windows it blocks the loading of unsigned kernel drivers so to load an unsigned kernel driver you bypass patch guard by removing it so there's two uh, patch guard bypasses that i know of um that are public and this one's called dse fix it's like pretty old it's been abandoned by the um, developer because he created a new one over here called tdl um, so I'm going to use DSE fix just because of uh, its simplicity, it's easy to use. Uh, if you use TDL you have to code your driver in a specific way, you have to code it as driverless because of the specific bypass that this is. So I wouldn't recommend using this if you're a beginner, but if you understand it then use it because um, using DSE fix on Windows 8.1 and Windows 10 uh, can lead to a blue screen and that can be instant or it can be after multiple hours. Basically, I'm gonna be using this today if you wanna do um, TDL, which is a bit more advanced and it doesn't blue screen on 8.1 and 10, then use that if you want, but I'm using this. It works on Vista 7, 8, 8.1 and 10 and it's only for x64 windows, okay? If you have an x86 machine, I don't know what to tell you. Um, so once you download that, once you download this, we can start coding the driver. So I've already made this, but I'll show you how you do it. You just go new project, and then you want to go uh, C++, Windows drivers, uh, kernel mode driver, empty, and then name it something, and then just create, okay? Uh, so this is mine. Once you've created it, you want to go into your project settings, and you want to go driver settings, and you want to make sure the target platform is set to universal if it's not set already. Once you've done that, go anywhere. I'm just going source files, make a new item and call it driver.c. Don't call it .cpp, not .h.c, okay? And then create that and then go into it. And this is where we put our code. So first thing you wanna do is you wanna include these two files here. Uh, NT. Okay, and WDF. Okay, next we're gonna make two global variables, which is gonna be driver entry and this the device add event. I'm gonna call it uh, toot driver. The reason I'm doing that is just because that's like, um, fuck, what's it called? Not like protocol, but like, I don't know. People just do that when they're making drivers. I don't know, man. So, what we're gonna do is code driver entry. I'm just gonna be a pointer to a driver object, and we're gonna call it drive object. Next is a unicode string and that's going to be the registry path of the driver and that's it. So first thing you want to do in this function here you want to do create a status and we're going to set it to status underscore success. After that, we're going to create our driver config and then we're going to debug something here. Uh, I'm going to set it to dp filter uh, ihv driver id. Next you want to pass dp filter info level and then what you want it to debug. So what's this doing? It's just sending like an output message to um, kernel debuggers. So you can see um, 
so you can output uh, from your driver okay this is um, the same as C out in a normal C++ program okay and uh, driver entry is like the main in main of a C++ program so just trying to make those connections there so that um, you guys can kind of uh, learn it quicker because I'm sure you understand uh, user mode C++ program so you know showing the relationship can uh, help you understand better so this is like C out this is like int main okay so what do we want to output I'm just gonna say driver entry just so we know this was called and our driver was loaded uh, when we're debugging it later next we want to do driver config its there we're gonna pass the config then uh, the this which I don't want to type and then after that we're gonna do status WDF driver creates driver object then registry path with two R's WDF no object Okay, that's all the parameters. Um, and then lastly, just return status. Uh, uh. Amazing. All right, so that's the drive entry. Next, we need to do the this thing. Just do that, and then takes in two parameters, which is going to be a WDF driver, as a device, nice driver. Yeah, that one, and we're gonna call a driver, and then takes a in out, which is gonna be a pointer to a WDF device. This function's relatively simple. A couple lines of code. First thing we want to do is we want to unreference the driver parameter because we're not using it. And empty status. That is not how you spell status. I'm just going to call it status. And then we want to do device and page device. What's this doing? Allocating the device object. And then next we want to output something. So I'm going to copy that. That I'm just gonna say uh, event device add. Okay. After that, we're gonna create a device. We're gonna do status equals VF device create device in it. And it's this fucking thing which I can't be bothered typing. And then I'm just gonna pass the handle to the device, and that's it. Then we go return status and that should be it for our driver so you want to make sure it's release you want to make sure it's x64 and let's build that motherfucker okay cool so now that we've built it we coded it uh let's run it so dsc fix you get that from the github that i talked about before and it's going to be linked in the description and this batch file to load the driver i'll put this uh text in the description so you can just make your own batch file real quick uh the only thing you need to change is the directory to all the files so directory to the dse fix wherever you downloaded it and the directory to your driver okay and you want to make sure you keep this pipe equals kernel just do a space and then leave that in there and that's it you can change this is the name of the service that it creates so you can just change that to whatever you want. I'm going to change it um, to, I don't even know, okay, I'm just going to make it that. Uh, uh, okay, so what does this do though? 
uh, what it does is it runs DSC fix so it patches the patch guard then it waits two seconds and then it creates a service to load our driver then it runs that then it waits five seconds and then it uh, unloads the DSC fix patch um, this only matters if you're on Windows 8 or Windows 7 it doesn't matter if you're on Windows 8.1 or Windows 10 because uh, restoring the kernel memory region to its original state won't uh, do anything because the patch guard will already have detected the change and it should blue screen you in uh, some time. So personally when I'm using this I've played like three comp games with like my kernel cheat in uh, CSGO and I haven't been blue screened and then like I don't know maybe like I'll be watching YouTube like two hours later and then I'll get blue screened. So it's like it just it's random it's really random. But um, like I said, this is just for beginners. Once you get more comfortable with drivers, you can use TDL, which shouldn't blue screen you, but uh, it requires you to design your driver to be driverless, which is a different kind of a uh, setup. And for me, that's a bit complex for me because I'm still learning about drivers. So maybe once I learn about um, what this really means and how to make your driver driverless, I'll make a video about it. Um, there is source code of example drivers like that work with this um, bypass, but um, I don't really understand it. So I'm not gonna make a video about it. Let me know if you want me to learn it and make a video about it because I totally can. Um, anyway, back to this. So once you've changed it to your directories and the name of your driver, which I'm gonna do right now. So don't worry about the name here. This is just from my other recordings, which completely failed. So you want to go into your where your driver is, you want to go x64 and then release and then into the second one and then find what it is. Now I don't know what I called mine so I'm going to go here and I called it tutorial drip. Very nice. Which is here. So I'm going to copy that name and I'm going to chuck it in here. Okay, save that and then it should be ready to go. So you want to make sure you have your uh, kernel debugger running. Um, I use debug view. You can just get it for free, download it, Google it and download it. Um, if you're using this one, what you want to do is you want to make sure the capture kernel, it might have like a red X. See how that has a red X. Um, you just click it and it'll enable it. So you want to make sure it looks like that. Um, enable pass through and enable that. Um, and then you should be able to see all the debug output. Um, so you can see it from your driver as well. So um, let's load the driver and see if it outputs and see if it loads. So once we've got everything set up, minus admin, uh, create server success, loaded tutorial driver, and there we go. See if it outputted, and there you go. It outputted the driver entry, which is what we have in our code up here. Output driver entry. So yeah, our driver loaded and it outputted, and that's all. So that's how you create and load an unsigned driver. Uh, so you could turn this into a cheat or whatever you want to do. Um, thanks for watching and hopefully I make another video and don't just be lazy. Catch you later.